Hey guys, we are going to take a look at the MTG stock market, if you want to view it as that way. Again, I will preface this by saying that we are in a bull market now, as Alpha Investment has noticed. Um, Magic the Gathering is doing very well. Uh, Cynthia Williams is gone. Um, I do think a lot of what she brought to the table, she's now at Funko, which is also, I mean, if she can flip Funko around, hey man, maybe I was wrong about her because Funko is in a tailspin to zero. Um, Funko is just a mess right now. I used to collect Funkos and they're just, the quality, the creativity is non-existent right now. So back to the issue at hand here. And in reality is that this actually is a good investment if you put your money behind the reserve list and top tier. I'm not talking about like five, $10 cards that you hope quadruple and overnight, but have no liquidity. The most important part about investment is liquidity. So the number that you might be looking at is not actually the, the I can tell you that obviously the number they will buy from me is very important, but probably the more, more important number is the quantity they will buy. So the max quantity. So if you have a beta time walk, is it worth more than a buy you? Yes, of course, but they only want three of them. And I would imagine that if they got more, they wouldn't take it. Now, if they got more than 25 buyus, would they take them? Yes. I can tell you from experience, they will take them. From actually going to a GP Houston and having more than their current buy list uh, as online, not Card Kingdom, it was a strike zone online. They would be more than happy to take Tundras or buyus because it's liquidity. It's much easier to move a Tundra or... 20 tundras than it is to make move one uh, beta time walk or time twister or whatever you want because that's hard to do uh, maybe black lotus would probably be the exception it's slightly more easy to move than the other power nine because it's well known in the community but nonetheless you do have scenarios where like you know a, a mox emerald for three thousand dollars or 10 bayous for three hundred dollars I'm pretty sure, almost positive, Card Kingdom would rather take the 10 Bayous because the Bayous can easily be liquidated um, and even not, maybe not all 10 of them at the same time, but play set here, one for EDH deck there. And, uh, you, you have no questions about liquidity on a Bayou for a Mox Emerald. You kind of have to find a very different customer at that price point. Uh, even... Um, you look at the beta underground C, there's just, you know, when you put that much money behind a card, you are looking at 0.0001% of the magic population, as opposed to literally every EDH player would need a Savannah or Plateau for their new EDH deck. So that's the one thing that I would say, um, liquidity is king and it always will be king and there'll be nothing better than liquidity. And the number that you're mo I'm mostly interested in is a max quantity. This has, you have a problem when you deal with sealed product. The max, max quantity for sealed product is much lower than singles because sealed product, you need to store it. It's, it's more difficult. Um, it's not easy to sell it all of them at the same time because you would be flooding the market. And people understand this, right? People get it. But the amount of volume, at, so, one thing to look at is you can short the Card Kingdom cards by most activity, and it's always Underground Sea as one or two, sometimes Volcanic, depending on you know what, what's popular at the moment, maybe one. And, and if a new set releases, then you know the new set or whatever cards that would pair well with the new set may be one or two. Um, that, that's, that's a lot, right? I mean, that, that basically tells you how many people are interested in the card and if the card is a dual land, they're always in the top 25. So dual lands have incredible interest. So I think the dual lands, again, assuming you have some real estate, if you want real estate, I, real estate, I turned out, is not for me. I tried it, not for me. Um, if you want stocks and bonds, you have as much as you can. Before you put money in magic, um, understand that you can put money into a lot better assets, uh, different asset classes. I would put Magic the Gathering among you know, cards as among the lowest of uh, investment opportunities, um, if you want to put it that way. I would even say, like, 
outside of you having a store, there really isn't a way for you to accumulate a lot of this. So liquid li liquidation is important, but you also have to accumulate it. Um, if you wanted like 10 mox jets, how would you get that? Like you have to have like in, in this type of thing where you're going to be selling for a discount, you also have to get a discount when you buy it. Are there that many people who know about you? So I'm in a advantageous position where I've done a lot of deals. People know about me locally. And I have, um, you know, I had a store for many years in Houston. So I still get deals from that, from having had a store, from people who had sold to me or a friend. You know, I had this guy um, this Sunday, uh, the guy I met, we're having lunch Sunday, and they might be paying me a lot of money for my magic binder. Um, I met him via my store probably four years ago and just out of the blue he contacted me and and this is actually you know very common I had that happen to me yesterday last night a guy can read the text a guy contacted me and say hey I used to go to your store I don't really remember him I, I mean it's, it's been like that's like six years ago or something hey I have all these car I have all these masterpieces at the time that I collected and are you interested and I said yeah I'll take them so, yeah, it, it's fascinating. It truly is fascinating um, how, like, when people need to sell, there's only, like, a few people in Houston that buy. Uh, and I got my workshops, and I got, like, these are, like, quality pieces. Um, these are quality pieces that, you know, I might hold on. I don't actually have a play set of workshops. I don't know what happened to them. I might have sold them. Um, I probably had to look at my Excel spreadsheet. I think I sold them a while ago. I just always, I just kind of forgot. It's a kind of a bigger card. So when you deal with a lot of these buyers and sellers, and I mean, it's kind of like the more you sell, the more you can sell. And the more you buy, the more you can buy. But opportunity, you know, liquidation is t difficult. And accusation, or not accusation, acquisition, acquisition, yeah, acquisition is difficult. So it's hard to buy a lot of them that you want because a lot of times when you're buying like their shit, like you're, you have to buy everything. I have like 20 gold span dragons, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Everyone and their grandmother at one point in time wanted to sell me their gold span dragon because their buy list was outrageously high. And to buy some of the like the beta Sarah Angels and beta demonic tutors, which I really want, I had to buy like 20 of these gold span dragons because that was also part of the collection. You can't just buy... And that's the idea of the buy list is I don't actually have control over what I'm buying. You choose what you want to sell me and then we work on the price together, right? So, in my opinion, hey, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys.